Hello Hunters, and welcome back to my story. Let's begin part 17. Spirit asks Zeus why he's laughing. Then Zeus snaps his fingers and suddenly Magi appears, and he's tied up and severely wounded. Spirit asks what the meaning of this is, and Zeus tells him that Magi traveled to Earth on his own, and ran into the four Spriggan that weren't involved in the war until recently. Soul, Peace, Joji, and Nardix. They ganged up on him, beat him up, and captured him. Now he has a new plan with Magi. He begins to draw he begins to drain Magi's magic power. Spirit tries to stop him, but he forms a new barrier. This one is on a five minute timer. That's how long Zeus needs for this experiment to be complete. Now all Spirit could do is watch, because even if he fired an attack that was strong enough to break the barrier, it would also cause the roof to clut it would also cause his healing to collapse on them. That probably wouldn't hurt Spirit, but since Magi's wounded, it would kill him. Meanwhile, Alexis has made it to the shoreline of the Bannon Ocean. As she's about to get ready to dive in, a mob begins to charge her way. They know of Zeus's mission to capture Terrakit's princess, and they want to do just that. She knocks them all out at once with her blazing inferno spell. Now she changes into her swimsuit and dives into the ocean with the key pieces in hand. Luckily she doesn't have to worry about getting air because of a water breathing amulet she got from Blair. She reaches the deepest part of the ocean and finds the deep sea temple shortly after. She enters the temple and begins to explore. Back at the library, Every last ounce of Magi's magic power has been drained, and it manifests into a dark figure that looks just like Magi. It is a version of Magi created by it is a version of Magi created by this ritual that will follow Zeus's every command. Dark Magi. Zeus's barrier wears off, but then he tells Dark Magi to attack Spirit, and the two of them begin fighting. Meanwhile, many other fights begin at once. Akka and Dragot begin fighting in the Straw Mountains. Curtis and Sarah have met up in Outskirt Town, and they begin fighting the Spriggan Soul a user of all kinds of dark magic and lost magic. Stry and Shelly are together in Cherokee City and they begin fighting the Spriggan Peace, a user of earth magic. Lee, Hans, Sam, Michelle, Annabelle, and Jerry have met up in Mountain Foot Village and they begin fighting Joji, a user of offensive magic and time magic. Jay, Kevin, Blair, Claire, and Gear have met up in Great Village and they begin fighting Nardix, a user of stealth magic. In Cherokee Fields, Ikage is fighting Horatio, one who can use magic to drastically increase his speed. Hikari is fighting Ragnarok, one who can use magic to drastically increase his defense. Enzo is fighting Crash, one who can use powerful explosion magic. Akira is fighting Drake, who can use the same abilities as the necromancer who revived him, Alkest. Roshan feels the magic power of the other four, and he feels that Gerald's is significantly higher than the other three, so he takes on Gerald alone and leaves John, Josh, and Joel to Rose and Lily. All twelve of these battles are very intense, and while they're going down, Alexis has made it to the deepest part of the Deep Sea Temple. There she finds Orpanite. A type of metal from planet Orpani that somehow made it here. Its mysterious powers allow it to fuse any group of metals together, so she uses it to make the key hole once again. Now she just has to leave the temple and return to the Zuso temple entrance to unlock the door. When she gets back to the surface, her bag containing her clothes that she left on the beach are gone. She looks around and sees some thieves holding her bag running off towards Orange Village. They're the same thieves who stole her bag back when her and Akka were at the Orange Temple together. She decides to just blast them with fire, which sends them flying. When she goes back to check on her bag, however, it's burnt to a crisp. Only her clothes were in the bag, but now she has to walk around in the swimsuit. She begins to take a walk of shame back to the Zuso Castle ruins. And while she's doing that, a spaceship containing a familiar face lands near the ruins. Meanwhile, Silver Spirit is struggling in the battle against Dark Magi, and he has no idea why. Dark Magi is about to finish him off with a punch, but then someone blocks the attack. It's German. He's joined the fight now too because he wants to avenge the ones on his planet that Spriggan attacked. He's saved Spirit and he sees why Spirit isn't doing well in the fight. Zeus has Zeus has known the Alliance's plans all along, and he knew that it would eventually just be him and Spirit in the library. So when he first arrived there with Jerry, he drew an enchantment around the whole room that would slowly drain Spirit's energy specifically. He knew th he knew this plan and this enchantment thanks to the secrets of the Universe book. German breaks the enchantment by stomping on the center point of it, then he tells Spirit to take Magi and leave. Spirit grabs Magi, but before he leaves, he asks Zeus once again where Goose is being held. He tells him he can't remember. Then Spirit leaves with Magi and wishes German good luck. Then he decides to go where Atka is once he's recovered. Once he steps outside, Alexis shows up too with the key. He asks her why she's in a swimsuit, and she re replies that she lost her bag and clothes on the way back. Then Spirit fires a small beam at her, and she's suddenly wearing a new set of clothes. With his magic, he could change anyone's set of clothes, even his own. Alexis thanks him for the new clothes. Then she notices that Spirit is exhausted and Magi is out of commission. So she picks up the bottle of miracle water that she left on the ground earlier, and she gives it to them. Now Spirit and Magi are back in action. Then Spirit notices the ring on Alexis's finger, and he asks about it. 
She says that she'll only say it if they swear to keep it a secret. They agree to, and Alexis says that it's an engagement ring, and she's getting married to Atka after this war. Now Alexis, Spirit, and Magi set off for the Straw Mountains, where Atka is currently fighting the Dragons. Meanwhile, all these battles except for one are about to come to an end. Sol gives Curtis a bit of trouble at first with his many forbidden spells, but in the end, Curtis won. Peace seems to overpower Stry at first by using the entire city as a weapon with his earth magic, but in the end, Stry defeats him. Joji seems to give the Mountain Foot Village team a lot of trouble at first with his time manipulation. In the end, however, Lee won the fight. At first, Jay and his group thought Nardix would be an easy opponent with all who was on his team, but then it turns out Nardix is the second strongest Spriggan, and his stealth magic isn't easy to deal with either. He gives Jay, Kevin, and Gear some trouble, but thanks to some support magic from Blair and Claire, Jay is able to defeat him. Herman turns his anger into power just like he did back in the tournament, and he's able to destroy Dark Magi. He captures Zeus too, and he begins taking him back to Cherokee Castle. The reason why he knows what's going on already is that he stopped by Planet Elden on the way to Earth, and Junior, who knows two things to Roshan, filled him in on the situation entirely. And now he's taking Zeus back to the castle because they have some questions for him. German's interference is something nobody expected, not even Zeus. Surprisingly, the battles on Cherokin Fields weren't particularly easy ones. The power of the Fountain of Wishes, which Zeus's empire abused to get stronger, is nearly limitless. Hikage has a hard time catching Horatio due to his speed, but Hikage wins in the end by firing blasts all around him. Hikari isn't doing much damage because he can't get past Ragnarok's overwhelming defense, but it gets broken thanks to Enzo. Enzo was fighting Crash but couldn't get close to him because of the explosions, but Enzo ends up being able to withstand them when he exerts his full power, and he knocks Crash into Ragnarok, causing Crash to explode. This explosion knocks out Crash and shatters Ragnarok's defenses, allowing Hikari to deliver the final blow. Kiro is dealing with a barrage of attacks from various weapons made from the Earth itself thanks to Jake's magic, but in the end, Akira won. Gerald, John, Josh, and Joel only use their magic offensively with no strategy involved, and as such, Roshan, Rose, and Lily defeat them easily. Now that all the battles except for Atkas are over, they all they all go to regroup at Cherokee City. But before Roshan leaves, he asks Jake why him and his siblings hate the world so much. Jake decides to tell him. He says that when they were all young, they lived in Zuso City. When they were kids, their parents were all taken away from them. Jake and Gerald's father was sent to war just to be killed, and their mother was killed by the Beast Hawkus. John, Josh, and Gerald's father was executed because he was against the idea of going to war, and their mother was put in jail for no reason, only for the prison to be reduced to rubble by the airship during the war. That airship, Cherokin's ultimate weapon, destroyed a lot during the war. Too much, in fact. Which is why it was put away in a secret area after the war, only for Gear to discover it later. This airship's destruction in the war is also why Zeus sought it out, and obtained it by using the Fountain of Wishes, and had Dragot, his strongest ally, pilot the ship. After the war, the five of them lived together and had very rough lives for the next seven years. They had no one to take care of them, so they could only get food by stealing it, and they had to drink from a lake. Every year, they went to the Fountain of Wishes. They wanted to use it to bring their parents back, but every time they were stopped by the Empire, who would always use it for selfish reasons. After those seven years of hardship, they gave up on wishing their parents back. They took the secret teleporter in the temple to go to Cherokin, and there they started their lives anew. They all vowed to rule the world together someday, no matter what it took, because the world took everything away from them. John, Josh, and Joel stuck together, and Jake and Gerald went their separate ways. Ever since then, things haven't been any easier. Now they're back with a man who's been so cruel to them, because they just want power. The reason why Jake resurrected past villains Gerald made Blair suffer, and John, Josh, and Joel join forces with Gear, and use the same weapon that killed their mother, is because they're angry. Angry at the world for how much they've suffered. Roshan pities them and tells them that they could have sought out help long ago. And he says that one shouldn't treat hate with hate, but to always respond with kindness. For that is how someone truly lives a good life filled with happiness. Then he tells them that he never had parents either, and only lived on because of his friends that stayed by his side. And he tells them that if they have friends, they will be able to look past the darkness and see the light much more easily, because true friends will stick with you and make sure you're happy. Then Roshan tells the five men who are now in tears that he can help them find that light, because it's not too late. Roshan holds out his paw, and Jake is reaching out to it, until suddenly he loses his power and turns into stone. Roshan suspects that something happened with the necromancy who brought him back. Back at the Earth Temple, that is indeed the case. Alcast has been drained of his magic power by Ferey, Boku, and Hunter, who showed up there to get him, but saw that he's still unconscious. So they decided to steal his power to power themselves up. Then Hunter picks him up and they head back to Cherokin. Roshan still heads back to the city with the other four, 
Then when they get there, Roshan explains why they're with him. Now they're all there and waiting for Atka, Alexis, Spirit, Magi, and German. Sp Spirit, Magi, and Alexis have been taking it easy and going slow on the way to Atka, so they're only at the part between the Cherokee Woods and Forest of Death. The Spriggan took the teleporter and are going as fast as they can, so they easily catch up to the others. Now they have to defeat these Spriggan once again, so Alexis fights Fere again, Spirit fights Boku again, and Magi fights Hunter. Meanwhile, Atka's fight hasn't been serious at all. They've just been warming up. Now, however, they finally decide to get serious. Atka powers up to his ultimate form and Dragot unleashes the full extent of his magic power. He reveals that he knows every spell there is. With this and his highly potent magic power in mind, it's no wonder he's speared across the cosmos as the second strongest wizard to have ever lived. It will take Atka everything he's got to even hope to take this guy down. Thanks for watching part 17 of this story. Stay tuned for part 18 for the conclusion of these battles and for what happens with Gu 2 and the ultimate weapon. I'll see you guys then. Happy hunting.